reverse it, Dr. Schur, to just uh, before the collision, so you can we can focus on that and explain what you mean um, to show by this animation. Maybe I can't. How do you? <laughs> you could press play again, and it will get to. Oh, here we go. Okay, there you go. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So, take us through, um, if you would, Dr. Schur, what uh, um, this animation shows from your point of view as a biomechanics expert. Sure. Um, the first thing that you should be aware of is that this is Miss Paltrow's version of the events. So, Dr. Schur, sorry to interrupt you. Oh, just maybe we'll pull your mic. Sorry, yeah, sorry about that. Um, the, the first thing to be aware of is. Um, this is Miss Paltrow's uh, version of the events, so that's what we're showing here. And um, as we move forward, I'll talk about the physics, kind of like what I drew earlier with the center of mass and the rotation, and that's the idea, that's what went into this. But again, this is not exactly what happened, this is just one of the possible ways it could have happened. So um, we have Miss Paltrow in black, Mr. Sanderson in the blue as uh, they move forward in time. Uh, it's uh, her testimony that his skis slid between hers. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, she felt a contact directly in the back, along her back. It sounded like her buttocks as well. Um, it the person was grunting, um, pressing against her, but they were on their skis for a period of time. If in this situation he's also moving to skiers right, which is in the left in this image, that will create, remember I had the force that was offset from the center of mass. That's going to create a rightward motion for her, but also create some initial rotation. Now, in, in this portion, there's a number of possibilities. She could be adding weight to her right ski because of the contact from Mr. Sanderson. Um, when you ski, if you're in, let's just take a snowplow or what my kids call pizza position, if you weight the right ski, you turn left. So if she weights the, the right ski here more because of the contact, she's going to turn counterclockwise the contact from Mr. Sanderson, if it's more to the right, will turn her counterclockwise. So as they're moving to the right here, there would be some counterclockwise rotation. And here, her ski can catch, or she could pitch to the side, or they could both pitch to the side, they could both lose balance. We're not sure what happens. But as they're rotating, they're continuing to fall, and Miss Sanderson, I'm uh, sorry, Miss Paltrow's version has them spooning uh, essentially as they're coming down together, which would make sense if their legs got caught up. If he was contacting her below her center of mass where his right leg was contacting her right leg, her uh, thigh in that area. Also consistent with Miss Paltrow saying that her knee, her right knee was splayed open at the end and she felt right knee discomfort. That, that all could happen there. So as she's rotating and he's rotating counterclockwise, they fall to the side. Now, at this point here in the animation, I guess maybe the next frame, if I can do it. Mr. Sanderson lands on his right side, maybe the right back. Um, it's hard, hard to say. If he lands on his right side, kind of like Dr. Bam said, you know, he needs to land on the elbow, that can happen. That can create lateral rib fractures. But that's not the only way. His arm could be out, he could land on the side and create lateral rib fractures. He could land on his side and a little bit towards the back and Miss Paltrow could land on him. She could be fully on him, maybe um, with her, her buttocks or her back or some portion of her mass compresses his chest front to back, and that can create his rib fractures. There's a lot of different ways this could happen. I can't tell which one of those is right, but all of those are consistent with her version of the events. As they hit the snow, they would continue to move forward until friction slows them down. 
And uh, it's also important to note, we haven't talked about the head injury, but hitting the back of the head or the side of the head, he, he could have his head turned. All of those are possibilities for him to contact his head on the snow. So that's not inconsistent as well. Would it be helpful to show it in real time? You've been doing it kind of slow motion, which has sure. been also been very helpful. Maybe maybe start from the beginning and just play it. Objection lacks foundation for trajectory, speed, and direction. Overruled. It's a demonstrative of this witness's testimony only. All right. Thank you. Okay. This and, is sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Doctor. This is from the the beginning. And if there's anything you want to comment on as it happens, feel free. I think that accurately reflects the version that Ms. Paltrow testified to that matches the laws of physics and biomechanics as I understand them. And would it be helpful to show, there's one other animation that has a little zoom in from the other angle, would that also be helpful? I think, it, yeah, it can't okay. hurt. Let's show that then, permission to approach your honor for that. Okay. What's the number of this animation? This will be number four, it's called Zoomed Inside. What was the last one, James? Five. Number five. Oh, sorry. Okay. Wait just a sec. Okay, Dr. Schur, so I'm playing you number four, the zoomed in from the side version. Were you a part of creating this version as well? Yes, this is the same animation but from a different camera view. Got it. And Will this animation also help you explain the same things you've been going over it, with the jury? It's the same thing, sure. Yeah, I, I think it also visualizes, it, it illustrates my opinion. Okay. Your Honor, permission to show this uh, animation? Same Subject to the same objections by the plaintiffs, the animation for zoomed inside is received for demonstrative purposes only. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. So. Dr. Scherer, maybe since we've already gone through this, this slow motion, let's just play this one from the start, and then you can s add anything that you can provide to the jury from this angle. Sure. Here, let's play first, and then there we go. Um, I'll wait until the contact point. So it's coming up. Here we go. There's contact fall to the right. This one doesn't show the rotation quite as much, and we don't know the amount of counterclockwise rotation as well. There could be a little, there could be more or less, Right. we're not sure. But if you if you go backwards a little bit uh, in into the moment of the collision, this one maybe shows, uh, does this one show the skis coming between the skis? Yes, it does. And I think it's better visualized in this one. Yeah, and and again, uh, what's the significance of that in terms of how the mechanism of the fall occurs? Well, um, that's Miss Paltrow's testimony, and it works for the physics of them falling and rotating slightly counterclockwise. Um, frankly, if it wasn't both skis, if it was one ski between hers, the kinematics would be the same. For example, if his right ski were on the outside of her right ski, it wouldn't change the general kinematics. This is generally, and I keep saying generally because we don't know the exact details of it, uh, this would work. So if we flipped the, the positions of the parties and Mr. Sanderson was in front, Ms. Paltrow came from behind, using this uh, as a good visual for the jury, will you explain the, your opinions about what we, we would expect to happen um, on Mr. Ramon's account, I should say? Well, Mr. Ramon's account is very different because in Mr. Ramon's account, uh, Mr. Sanderson goes spread eagle and his skis go out into that V and the inside edges catch. And that changes the kinematics, the motion 
um, it's a very different version of what happens with the contact. And uh, in terms, uh, I, I guess we've covered that. So maybe we'll wrap up here. The um, you've covered a lot of things, a lot of new things, perhaps for members of the jury and uh, those of us in the room. Will you um, will you uh, summarize for us um, what are, what are the main points that you want to get across for the jury here? Uh, sure. The first is that Dr. Baim cannot say with any accuracy that Miss Paltrow landed on Mr. Sanderson. His calculations are wrong, and when you look at the equations done properly, Mr. Sanderson can land on the snow and sustain his injuries without Miss Paltrow fall falling on him. And if I may, Dr. Sure, was it your understanding that Dr. Baim's opinion was that his account was the only possible way the injuries could occur. Yes, Mr. Ramon's version was the only possible way. He said Ms. Paltrow's was impossible, which I believe is false. I, I think Ms. Paltrow's version is possible. Right, and would you say that Ms. Paltrow's is the more likely of the two accounts? Well, considering it's the only one that matches with the physics of what would happen in contact, yes, I, I think so. Okay, and I interrupted you. You were going through the, your main points. What was the next one? Oh, I think we've covered it. The, the second thing is that Dr. Baim cannot say that Ms. Paltrow's version is impossible. That's absolutely wrong. It sounds like you're saying, in contrast to Dr. Baim, that there are various ways this uh, accident could have happened, the injuries could have uh, occurred for Mr. Sanderson. Is that right? That's correct. And um, you've evaluated the various testimony, correct? I have. And you've, you've uh, done a careful analysis from a biomechanical engineer's perspective on what different scenarios might be likely or how they would happen, correct? Correct. And, and is it your opinion that Ms. Paltrow's version is the more likely of the two versions that you looked at, Mr. Ramones and Ms. Paltrow? Yes. Once again, it's the only version out of the two that matches with the laws of physics, the, the biomechanics of it. Okay. Anything else you'd like to tell the jury that maybe I, I interrupted you on and you, you missed out on? No, I think we're, we're good. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's thank all you. for now, Your Honor. Can you keep the screen there? Uh, sure. You can turn it off. Well, actually, leave it on for right now. On or off? On. Okay. Oh, okay. Morning, Mr. Or do you prefer Dr. 